I can't even imagine what pain they're going through and what I've caused. I noticed this white Land Cruiser wagon coming up, flying up behind us. And I could tell by the way Darcy's voice was and the second time he'd mentioned it that he was pretty worried for our safety. Because they were driving behind us and they were driving on the left hand shoulder of the road and then swerving over the centre line and getting really close. But Friday night or late afternoon he got a call from work and said can you come in and do Saturday night shift. All I can remember is driving, getting in my car and driving. But all we know is he went to the party for the de to be the designated driver. He started the drink, he continued through the night and we all know what the result was. Ultimately, before we could turn off, he'd, um, he'd gone onto the opposite side of the road and, and uh, had a head-on high-speed crash with the, the uh, oncoming traffic. I don't think he was overtaking, I think he just swung out and not in control of the vehicle and that's when he killed Ken. I'd worked it out that I didn't think that this anybody was going to survive it, but for some crazy reason he was walking around out of it. There's a lot of panic. There's a lot of people there. I can remember um, saying that he was screaming some stuff into the phone. It was pretty confronting. And then all of a sudden it's just a black blackout. And then woke up in the hospital. We've got a long driveway, 200 metres, so I had been waiting for Ken to come home and I was ringing his mobile phone every five minutes or so and just kept going to message bank. The dog started barking and I saw the police car pull up out the front of home and it was the local Marion police and he got out of the car and I yelled out to him and I said, don't come inside because I know what you're gonna say. And he just walked up the stairs and said, I'm sorry, I'm gonna tell you, Ken's been killed in a car accident. When it comes to having to go to deliver a death message to somebody and watch the world crumble around them because of a traffic crash that could have been avoided, absolutely, it does make me angry. I answered the phone and mum did her best to tell me what had happened. I immediately broke down at work. To have a police officer knock on the door and tell you that someone you loved is gone and you're expecting him to walk in the door is the most earth-shattering moment you will have in your life. It actually took me a long time after he passed away to realise that I can't call him. You do get frustrated, especially when you see the repeat of certain types of accidents where there's speed, alcohol or drugs involved. Riley's non-verbal and has intellectual impairment, but he's not the same boy as he was. And for months, he just would stand on the veranda waiting for his dad's car to turn up. It's not a day that goes by, I don't think of the victim and the victim's family. When I sat foot in that room, sat down on that chair, by myself behind those glass walls, it just all hit me. It was very confronting. I guarantee it's one of the hardest day I've ever done. I probably deserved much worse. Your actions have consequences, not just for you, but for everybody around you. I was flat out getting in a car for the longest time. We just keep getting up every day. Some days it's just like being on autopilot. There are no winners out of a trauma. Um, it changes your life forever. The biggest change, I guess, is I'm not truly happy anymore because Ken was what made me happy. Life is just different now. It's like I'm lost in a world that I have no purpose in anymore. I don't know where I belong, don't know where I fit in. We need to talk more. It's as simple as that. And it's the Australian way that, you know, mateship is, be is our way. So talk to your mates. Mates looking after mates is part of the uh, solution. I see myself and I'm trying to make myself a better person, but oh, I never see myself moving on. We need, again, mates to look after mates. For everything we have, there is a consequence. Let's make it a good consequence, not a bad one.